And if you've been listening on the internet, we've been having a problem. Somebody had flipped the gain up on my channel, and it was overdriving the camera, and we couldn't get it turned down on the camera enough to compensate. So uh, I think they, they maybe, are we looking good tonight? Much better. It's good to look much better. Amen? I like, to look, I like looking much better. All right. So we've gone over, and we're talking about what to do when face team weeks and victory loss. We're on number nine tonight. There's ten things. You know, uh, the, the, this, this came from a, a series of uh, sermons Brother Hagan did that he got off of Dake's book called uh, What to Do When Face Scenes. Oh, yeah, Youth by Hallelujah. What the Ten Things to Do When Face Scenes Week and Victory Lost. And so we're on number nine. So let's go ahead to Philippians 4 6. We're going to wrap this series up. Hallelujah. And it, not that this one's, uh, this one's just that, this one's shorter, but this particular point, but it, that means it's any less important. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. Glory to God. Now that is right before Colossians. I remember a guy I used to, a good friend of mine years ago, he said the way he remembered which one of those books between Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians came first, he just said the General Electric Power Company. That was his little acronym to help keep him straight. Hallelujah. Well, there you go. Philippians comes before Colossians and after Ephesians. Amen? The Bible says here in Philippians 4, 6, it says, be careful for nothing. Now, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God. What? Through prayer and th supplication with thanksgiving. When you're th giving thanks to God, you're thanking God. You're giving God the glory. Did you know, giving, you know when you give God thanksgiving for things, you're giving him the glory? Hallelujah. You know, one thing you know, you know, that we kind of picked up, uh, um, uh, Ann Durant used to do this a lot of times. She was, um, pray, you know, Brother Hagin was praying for the sick, and she'd get up, and, and while they were getting everybody ready, she'd say, now, uh, the, Lord, the Lord heals. And we, everybody starts quoting with her and say, now, one way he heals is through the laying on of hands. One way, but not the only way. Amen. And then, you know, we, we, he prayed for the sick, and then Dad Hagin was, you know, saying, oh, dear Lord Jesus, we give you the glory for all that's been wrought. All that's been accomplished, all that's been done. Why? Because man can't heal. Any man that's ministering uh, to, the, to the sick and having success is ministering under the anointing, and it's the anointing, it's the power of God. It's God doing the work through him. Amen? Jesus said it, the works that he did, he didn't do of himself. It was the Father in him that did them. Amen? So the same is true for us. So we're not saying that man can heal, but man is a vessel or, 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 or a... Um, a I hate to say utensil, but, you know, a man is a, is, is a tool in the hand of God, okay? But it's still, without God, you know, nothing's, taking, nothing's taking place. Without, without the anointing, you couldn't heal a gnat. Now, quite frankly, if you start healing gnats, we're going to have a talk. Because yeah. I squash them at every turn. And I remember about my, my days down in eastern Carolina. And I, you know, they're not as bad around here. Now, down in eastern Carolina, there's a lot of gnats. I mean, you get to sweating out there in the middle of summer, and they'd just be all around your face, all around your eyes. I mean, just all, you, just, you, just, you couldn't stop fanning to get rid of them rascals. You know, get out to the back of the field and start working. There they were everywhere. You know, you, you, you want to wear a, a little mesh thing over your head so it's too hot just to keep them out of your face, you know? Oh, my. Well, how do they? So if you start healing that, we're going to have a talk, all right? No, 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 no. Uh, but we want to understand. We want to understand that it's God that's doing the work. God gets the glory. And so when you ask God for something and you're expecting a return, you give him the glory for doing it. Amen. You always honor the Lord. You never take the honor for how great your faith is. You never take the honor for how well you pray. You never take the honor and the glory for, you know, your, your ability to get things done in the kingdom. No, all the glory goes to him. Amen. Amen. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise be unto him. So when you're asking God for something, you give him all the glory for doing it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You're the one that meets my needs. You're the one that supplied the need. You're the one that made the way where there was no way. Oh, I give you the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. So when your faith seems weak and victory lost, make sure you're giving God the glory for the answer. And you're not taking any unto yourself. Amen. Because it's so important. You know, that one of the most dangerous things in the world is to start taking God's glory for yourself. Now, Lord, my great faith is why I'm getting this. No, 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 no. You have faith in a great God. And if you've got great faith, it's great faith that came from a great God in a great God. And in his ability to do what he said he would do. Amen. So he gets all the glory. Amen. You couldn't heal the wart on the back end of a frog if you wanted to. 
Not that you wanted to, but if you wanted to, you couldn't. Hello? Y'all here? You're going home. You can't, you can't get anything done outside of him. I heard somebody say one time, and he was a well-known preacher, you know, and, and, and I like the ministry. I still like the ministry. But, you know, they said this. I thought, man, you shouldn't say things like that. That's just wrong. But they said, you know, man, I'll tell you what, if Jesus wasn't Lord and God wasn't real and so forth and so on, I'd still live this, this way because it works. Well, see, the problem with that is, is this. It wouldn't work because if God wasn't real and Jesus wasn't Lord, it wouldn't be there. Amen. So to make a statement like that's dangerous because what? It moves the glory from the Lord to the self. Well, I, I mean, it, it works, you know. I and mean, I know this lifestyle works. It only works because God is God. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now, I, I, I probably kind of guess I, you may, may know what they were trying to say. But see, you can't say stuff like that. Because bozos will run off with it. My faith will work no matter what. Even if Jesus wasn't here, my faith would work. No, 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 no. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if God wasn't real, you wouldn't have any faith coming. Because there wouldn't be any word from God to produce the faith. Amen. So no glory goes anywhere else but to God. And so when you, know, when you pray and ask God and believe that you receive, you give him the glory. You give him the honor. Oh, thank you, Father. You're the one that supplies my needs. Amen. Paul even said, now thanks be to God, which always calls us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you say amen? <clears throat> so be very careful. If you may, and, and check up on your life and make sure that you are giving God the glory and you're not taking it to yourself. And you're not, you're not manipulating that thing around and getting you the glory or, or shorting God on his glory. He said, I'll not share my glory with any man. Amen. And so make sure, you, make sure he's getting the glory. Say, God gets the glory. And you know, I, I love that song, My Tribute. Um, I think Andre Crouch did it. Or may have wrote it and, and, and recorded it. You know, a, a bunch of people recorded it since then. But, you know, how can I, give, how can I say thanks? For the things that you've done for me to God be the glory. Love that song. Powerful song. And that's still true. To God be the glory. Now, so one of the, one of the things we've gotten into error in, or excess in at, at minimum, in, in the charismatic word of faith circles is, we got to bragging about how great our faith was. How great, th how great, I mean, man, I believe God and got this. And I understand, I understand how going from faith to faith and from glory to glory and all these things. But you've got to be careful that when it comes down to it, you're making sure God is getting the glory. And you're not taking it unto yourself. And you're not kind of on the back end of that thing, kind of patting yourself on the back while you kind of go, glory to God. But, you know, hey, man, I'm really cool. Amen. He has to get all the glory, doesn't he? Amen. He has to get all the glory. Well, when it's all said and done, if you want people to be able to follow it, they've got to be able to follow the fact that God is the one we become fully persuaded he'll do what he said he promised. What he promised he said he would do. We got to have our faith in that. Like we talked about this morning, you know, Abraham was fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform. God gets the glory in the end of the whole thing. We may follow the faith of our father Abraham, but our, the faith of our father Abraham was fully persuaded that what he promised he was able to do. So God gets the glory. Amen. Amen. And then the tenth thing, and then we're going to close up with this last thing. And, um, you know, I'm glad y'all stayed over. Hallelujah. Is act as though you've received. If you believe you received, you act like it. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean go buy a car on payments that you can't afford. That's not acting as though you received. That's being stupid sometimes. I've seen some people go out and buy an automobile and say, look at my faith car. How much is it a month? Now, let me say something. If your faith was, I can believe God to pay $288 a month for a car, and you got a car for $287 a month, and you're believing God for the payments, okay. But don't give the impression Hello? That God blessed you with an automobile that you can't afford. You know, it's an $800 a month car, and you got your, you got your house. Everything else is, is, is in trouble, and you're, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're writing checks from one account to put and deposit another account, and you're, you're working on the float between six accounts. Remember, remember PTL? They had 2,000 checking accounts, and what they were doing is they were floating the accounts. They just they would write a check for this one to that one and wait for the 10 days to clear. But in the meantime, they were spending money out of this one. And then, you know, uh, and, and then they're floating another check here and they're floating another check there. And, they're floating another, and they just kept floating checks around. 
until they got caught because they came up short. And it's, you know, it's, just, it's just a matter of time that I think it's going to collapse. There's nothing, there's nothing else it could do. It had to collapse. You just can't float it long enough. Eventually somebody's going to call it. And, you know, and, you know we don't, we don't want to float our life, do we? So we're going to act as though we've received because we're in faith, not because we're in presumption. Now, look at Mark 11, 24, or we can look at 22 and 23. Jesus said, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things he says shall come to pass, he'll have what? Whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. No. <coughs> Notice he said, Believe that you receive them. Didn't say you receive them physically. You didn't have a man. He said, Believe you receive them. See, faith says, I have it even when I can't see it. So you start acting that way. Amen? Start acting on the, you start acting on your faith. You, start, you know, you start acting like you believe that you receive. Now, there, there's a balance here. See, you're talking about you believe that you receive in the realm of the Spirit. It will be manifest in the natural. But that doesn't mean you go, I believe I receive my, my bills paid. And you go out and write checks from your checking account with nothing in it. That's not, that's not, that's not believing you receive. You know, you know, you believe that you receive. You look at that bill and say, I, I call you met in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be like, like uh, uh, Jonah in the, in, the, in the belly of the big fish where he said, I, he said, I will not observe lying vanities. Amen. Although he was in the belly, he called it a lying vanity. So you can go, re go read it. That's what he called it. He said, I, he called it, I will not observe lying vanities. Right in the middle of the belly. Hallelujah. Amen. See, he believed he received his deliverance. Amen. He had his answer. Abraham changed his name to Abraham, you know, uh, even when he was still, when he was still fatherless and was not walking in what God said he was going to walk in. Amen. Isn't that right? I said, isn't that right? You know, neither shall you be called Abram, Genesis 75, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So he started acting like the father of many nations, started calling himself one. Now, Dad Hagen used to say, he said, not the only way, it's not the only way, but the number one way to release your faith is to say it. But isn't that what Jesus said? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. Didn't say has come to pass, shall come to pass. See, here, here's where we get mixed up sometimes. We, we start trying to put past tense in on what God put a future tense. Shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. We start walking around saying, I believe that it has come to pass. What things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye didn't say you will have, have had them. It says you shall have them. You shall have them. Now, that's a strong assertion. You can't get any stronger than shall. We don't use that word much in English anymore, but you will. What things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Amen. You believe that you receive them. By faith, you've received them. You've embraced the promise. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Abraham, was, it was imputed to him for righteousness, even while he just, he just came into agreement with the words, so shall your posterity be. He didn't say it was already there. It's just that he, listen, and I'll be honest with you, now think about that now. Even when Isaac was born, he still didn't have that, what God said, your seed would be as the sand of the seashore and the stars of the heaven. He just had one. Isaac was, was, the, was, the, was the posterity. Isaac was the promise by which all that was going to come through. He still didn't have all, those, all that. You know, I'll, make your, I'll multiply you and make your seed as the sand of the seashores and the stars of the heaven. Even when Isaac was born, he still didn't have the fulfillment of the fullness of the prophecy. But he believed it. He embraced it. And he, he ultimately had it. Amen. Just like God said. So let's, you know, let's make sure that we, we act like we've received it. What? See, faith has a, has, a, has a certain language. Faith has a certain de declaration. Faith has a certain confession. And it is that you believe that you receive, so you speak like it's yours. Amen. Now, not, you know, some of the things we've done in the past were, were attempts to look like we were in faith, but we weren't. We're trying to convince ourselves. Well, that's meditation. I, I'm, I'm all for that. I don't have a problem with that. But don't get confused and think your meditation is the release of your faith. 
They look alike and sound alike, but they're not the same. Why? Because there's a difference in here. The difference is in here. What things ever you desire when you pray, or, or actually back it up, you know, therefore whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he says. You know, you can say it and not believe it. You can go through all the same things. I believe that, you know, I receive my knee met in Jesus' name. Woo, praise God. Walk out the door, and on the inside of you, you know, you didn't believe a word of it. What do you do? You keep talking. You keep meditating. You keep muttering. You keep building faith in you. You go to the scriptures. You get more support from the word. You keep speaking it. Why? Because eventually it's going to drop down in you to the point you believe it. But the guy right next to you could have said it and believed every word he said. The only difference, and no one in the room can judge the difference. Only in the heart of the believer do you know what the difference was. Amen? Now, don't deceive yourself. If you know you weren't in faith when you said it, don't get condemned. Do something about it. Go to the scriptures, meditate in the scriptures, feed on the scriptures, declare the scriptures, get into the word of God, amen, until faith is alive in you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You stay with it until you get it. Amen? And then you start talking. See, I'll tell you, get around faith people, they talk a certain way. People who talk faith just talk it. It's, 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 it's their language. And now a lot of people, you know, a lot of people try to mimic that. And that's where people got in trouble years ago. They were mimicking instead of living. They were mimicking faith instead of living faith. Amen. And so they would see somebody make a confession. They try to copy it and expect the same results. You're not going to get the same result unless you've got the same heart or the same basis of what's coming out of your mouth. You don't believe it when you say it. You're not going to get to listen. You can stand out all day long and say, "I believe that God meets my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus." And if you don't believe it, you're not going to get the answer. Now, somebody might walk by and hear you say, "Well, oh, praise God, He's in faith and come over and do that." That's not faith. I mean, neither is, is oh brother. I'm believing God for a hundred dollars by the time this service is over. I just want you to know my faith is out there. I've got a need beyond any need you can imagine, but I've got my faith out there, Brother Jerry. I'm going to get $100 before the end of the service. And Jerry comes in and puts $100 in my hand at the end of the service. Pastor, praise God. Hallelujah. God spoke to me and told me to meet your faith. He didn't meet my faith. He met my manipulation. I had a roommate. I just ought to write a book one day, me and my roommates. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, my. Actually, before we were roommates, before we moved to Oklahoma, went to school together, <clears throat> we were, um, we were, we, we, we would get together all, a bunch of, you know, the girlfriends and stuff, we'd all we'd go meet one guy's place, and, and we'd all pray. Now, look, I'll tell you something. You know, it's good to have zeal, but you ought to have zeal according to knowledge. It's good to pray, but you ought to pray with somebody who's mature and spiritual. It's an authority. Well, they can say, you're out of line. Most of the time, you, I, you don't find that. Amen. If you're in a church, you ought to be praying where the church is praying. And if you're praying outside the church, you ought to be praying with people who, who are under authority and submitted and can say, no, you know, guys, we're getting out of line here. Well, how do you know you're getting out of line? It's time for Pastor Ed to leave. We're praying him out. Hey, you're out of line. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Get the whole church in on it. We've got to pray Pastor Ed out. It's time for him to go do something else. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we, we, you know, <coughs> we, were, we were there one day, and, and you got to understand the time. This is 1979. And so one of the guys had just got him a, it wasn't even a boom, it was a, it was a cassette, not even auto reverse cassette player. One single speaker, kind of a big speaker on this side, AM, FM, cassette, you had to turn the cassette over. You had to pop the door open, turn around, drop it back in, close the door, and hit play again. Those were the days, my friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, we thought, we thought, we got the cassette player, we thought we had arrived in life, amen? <laughs> had the little portable one you could put batteries in in your car and just, you know, ride them down the road and listen to Hagen and Copeland and all those tapes. I remember those days. Now you plug in an MP3 and listen to 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours straight and never do anything except just let it keep going. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, he looked over at the guy and he said, you know, Brother so-and-so, 
The Lord just might speak to you and tell you to give me that. He had just bought the thing. You got to send back this about $130, $140 uh, piece of electric equipment. Now you think that, well, that ain't nothing. Well, back then it was expensive. You know, it's always, you always pay for the new technology. No matter how quickly you advance out of that technology, you always pay for the new. How many of you remember about the going price for a, the original IBM PC with a color graphics adapter and color monitor? Somewhere in the neighborhood of five grand. And it did, I mean, you're talking, you're talking 8086 technology. Hello. I mean, we're talking slower than molasses in the middle of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the Antarctica. Okay? I mean, they were slow. How slow were they? I had a program written on an 8087 that had an error loop in it. So I, 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 if I encountered an error, I just put a thing up on the screen that said, you can't do this, basically, you know, so whatever I said, and put it up, and I had a 10, and I, and I looped it 10 times and with a counter just to keep on the screen so you could read it. When we got to 286, I had to move it up to 100. When they got to the 386, I had to move it up to 1,000. And then I, I forget, by the time we got to 46, we had gotten visual debase, and I didn't need it. I did something different. But after I looped it a thousand times on a 386 to keep on the screen long enough to see it, but on the on the 8087 or 86, whatever that pla 8088 was, it 8088, 88, ten times, and it would just sit there. How come I got off on that? Technology. Yeah, thank you. So that, that thing was really high tech for its day. non auto reverse, single speaker, AM, FM, cassette player. Brother so and so, the Lord might speak to you and tell you to give me that. Well, lo and behold, next time we came together, he comes walking out like he's got the Holy Grail. Oh, brother, the Lord spoke to me this week and said to give you this. Hogwash. You planted a seed in him. And he fell for it. Nobody in the room had, knew any better. Because, well, I mean, I was so young. I was so young. You know, I'm, uh, they, they're still got me in spiritual diapers. All I know is I love Jesus and carry my, my strong concordance and uh, amplified Bible around. I put them on the dash of my Fiat 124 Sports Spider. Took up the whole dash. No? See, that's not faith. That was manipulation. People of faith believe things and say things, and they don't have to manipulate people to get the answer out of them. I, I remember um, uh, my, my graduating year, um, the, uh, the alumni director at the time got up and talked about somebody from the previous class the year before and how they had come into the school. I actually got up during the early part of the year because they were trying to head off dumbness. Now, you're always going to have people who, 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 are, who are leeches and call it faith. But this, this older couple had taken all their retirement, moved to Tulsa after they retired from all their work, and, and they were going to come to Bible school and go do something for God. Well, this young whippersnapper got a hold of them and talked about he was living by faith. And, and by the time the year was over, he had drained all their finances because they supported him the whole year. And finally, he's getting to testify how the Lord had blessed him and how the Lord had taken care of him. And finally, somebody just got up and interrupted and said, you're, you're just a liar. Said, you took this couple's money, you took all their retirement, you bled them dry the whole year. It won't nothing to do with faith. But see, the money's already gone. You don't have to go whisper in people's ears how much you're believing for. Amen. I said, you don't have to go tell people how much you're believing for. The language of faith says, I got my knees, oh, praise God. How, how's everything, brother? Praise God. I, I'll tell you right now, Jesus is everything. I, I, live, I live in the realm of his blessings, hallelujah, and you don't, you don't sneak in there, praise God, I want you to know that by tomorrow night at, three, at, at midnight, I'm going to have a $500 need met, praise God, agree with me, brother. What you're really saying is you got $500 in your bank account, brother, you know, and they make sure you know where you're staying, what your phone number is, hallelujah, Amen. The language of faith is faith. It's not manipulation. So let's make sure that, we're, that we, um, 
that, that not only are we give glory to God, but that we also are believing, acting as though we've received. Without trying to get somebody else to figure out we have a need and get, and get them to meet that need. Amen. Now, I've shared stuff with people before, and they may come back and say, well, Lord, you know, Pastor, I want to, no, you can't do that. I actually tell you can't do it. Because that's manipulation. I've told you, I told you about this. You know, I, I don't want to manipulate people. Amen? You know, okay, it's got to be faith. It's got to be people believing. Now, listen, I understand. We, it's just one thing to come and say, listen, I need somebody to agree with me. I'm in, I'm in a place here. You know, you're not manipulating. I'm just in a tough place. I need you to agree with me. I've got to have answers from heaven. I've got to have somebody to pray with me and believe with me. Amen. Now, if you want to go help them, you can do that out of your heart. That's okay. But let's not mistake that. For they've, they've made their confession. They believe they received, and God supernaturally met the answer. You know, somebody just was moving compassion on, on a need and met it. Well, thank God. I mean, thank God we love people doing those things. Amen? Come, become aware of someone's need, and you just want to help them. Well, that's good. That's, that's the compassion of the Lord. But don't, don't mistake that as they were standing in faith, believing that God was going to meet their need. And, uh, and, and, and God supernaturally spoke to you and said, they have a need of $500, go meet it. There's a difference. Amen? So, we're going we're gonna to give God the glory, and we're going to act like we received the answer. Can somebody say, I'm going to act like I received the answer? Glory to God. I'm going to believe it's mine. I have it now. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say, I'll say glory. glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we bless you. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, rababasi kreka neski la la kachkis, kis, kis, kis. Oh, rababadele le bada kushe le le bada le le gis. Kron re gema da boka skudre le kima kama ka skudre kima. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for all the goodnesses and mercies of God. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in our midst, in our behalf. Thank you for an increase in the anointing, in the realm of signs, wonders, and miracles, particularly in that of, of, of the gifts of healing and demonstrations of the gifts of healings to minister life to people in Jesus' name. We do honor you and bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.